Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, and Veronica Lake in So Proudly We Hail. Introducing Sonny Tufts with Les Tremaine. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When the guns are silent and American boys come home again, from all over the world, many of our sons will owe their lives to the courage and skill of women who were there when the battle was on. Each branch of the service has its own nurses, and tonight's play is dedicated to all of them. The inspiring drama, So Proudly We Hail. Paramount made the picture, and tonight we present the same three stars you applauded on the screen. Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, and Veronica Lake. And with this lovely and talented trio, we have Paramount's new discovery, Sonny Tufts, who became an overnight sensation in this picture. Among all the stories of human heroism, none will be remembered longer than the saga of Batan and Corregidor, the heroes of those men. And so proudly we hail is the drama of those women, the army nurses. I don't remember any production in the history of the Lux Radio Theater that boasted three feminine stars of the magnitude we have tonight. And certainly there's no theater anywhere in the world that could hold the audience these three will draw. But Lux Toilet Soap has built a house as big as the nation itself so that you may enjoy the finest in drama every Monday evening. You aren't actually present backstage while rehearsals are going on, but you do have a hand in everything that happens here. You pick the plays and the players, and your purchase of our product is the power that keeps these footlights burning. I'm sure you'd buy Lux Soap anyway, but plays like so proudly we hail give you a double hit. And here's the first act. Starring Claudette Colbert as Davy, Paulette Goddard as Joan, and Veronica Lake as Olivia, with Sonny Tufts as Kansas, and Les Tremaine as John. May the 7th, 1942. Last night at 11 p.m., after a week of unceasing attack, the island fortress of Corregidor was surrendered to the Japanese. <laughs> Out of the black sorrow and tragedy of defeat, there came a light, the light of a miracle. This is the story of that miracle of eight American girls, army nurses, who were delivered from the flames of Batan, from the roaring hell that was Corregidor. They arrived one morning at Melbourne. Out of the sky they came, eight American girls, hungry, tired, dirty, still dressed in their blood-stained uniforms. Welcome to Melbourne. I bring you General MacArthur's compliment. Thank you, sir. I am Colonel Mason. How do you do? I'm Lieutenant O'Doul. This is Lieutenant Armstrong, Leonard, Schwartz, Bacelli, and Emerson. How, How do you do, you, sir? I'm happy to know you all, and thank God you're here. Colonel, did any of the other girls get off Corregidor? We were told there were ten more coming by submarine, but we haven't heard from them since they left. But aren't there any more? They said that everyone was to be ordered off. Everyone was ordered off, but we could only get about twenty before it was too late. Oh, then the rest of the girls are in the hands of those filthy... We should have stayed. You were carrying out your orders. Well, come along now. Your further orders are to proceed to the hotel where the Red Cross has warm baths and clean clothes for you. Colonel, do you happen to know when we're supposed to go home? On the very next transport. Wait, uh, I thought there were supposed to be eight of you. That's right, sir. You see, Davy, I mean Lieutenant Davidson, she's just being brought off the plane. Oh, a stretcher case? Yes, sir. Watch it, Joe. I got it. Handle her easy. What's the matter with her? Well, we don't know exactly. She's been conscious all the way, but she won't speak. She just lies there, staring. Now, hold that stretcher a minute. Yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Davidson, I am Colonel Mason. You'll be all right now, Lieutenant. You're out of it now. Lieutenant, do you hear me? It's no use, sir. Take her to the hospital. Watch it, please. Keep her out here on deck for a while, nurse. The fresh air might help. Yes, Major. Lieutenant Davidson, is there anything you want? You're on your way home now, Lieutenant. 
Doesn't that mean anything to you? I'll see her again this afternoon. Yes, Major. Major, is Davy any better? Oh, good morning. How is she, Major? Frankly, very bad. The closer we get to home, the worse she seems to be. What do you think's wrong? It's simple. When people don't want to live, they die. Oh, no. Oh, I knew we did the wrong thing. She didn't want to leave Corregidor. She wanted to stay. And when we got her on the plane, she just collapsed. If it were a mere physical collapse, I'd know what to do. Frankly, I'm desperate. I wonder... I wonder if perhaps you can help me. We'll do anything, Doctor. It's not going to be easy. I know how much you all want to forget what you've been through, but I only have one hope left. This letter is addressed to her. It came from Mindanao. Who's the letter from, Major? It's signed by somebody called John. John? Why, that's the boy... Uh, Just a moment, please. I want you to tell me everything you can remember. Things that might not even concern her. You never know. It might have its place in the pattern. Well, Joan knew her best. Lieutenant O'Doul, I mean. Well, Lieutenant? Well, I guess I did know her best. As a matter of fact, we joined up together. That was almost a year ago. She was the best nurse I'd ever worked with. She was so good-natured, willing to do even more than her share. And she was always patient and understanding, even about little things. Like like the time we were ordered to embark for Honolulu. <laughs> Davy was the first one at the dock and the last one to finish up. Everybody else was running around saying goodbye. Everybody except Davy. She was standing in the rain, seeing that things got done. Hey, O'Doul! Come on, here, you'd better get aboard. Hey, you got to help me. Oh, I'm in a terrible jam. What's the matter? Well, two of my fiancés came down to the dock. Two? Well, you know how hard it is for me to say no. I mean, when somebody asks me to marry him, I thought it would be easy for you to say no by now. Oh, well, golly, it's all in fun. But if these two Irishmen ever meet up with each other... Listen, can you stall one off for me, Davy? Hey, I... what goes? Oh, there you are, darling. I've been looking all over for you, Joan. <laughs> well, I've been looking all over for you, too, dear. Now, you stay here. I'll be right back. Hey, wait. And don't forget to write. Hey, what does she mean, don't forget to write? Letters, you know, from the post office. Uh, hey, Joan, come here. Oh, Captain, Captain. <laughs> here, w- would you hold these papers for me just a second? Well, I- I'm sort of in a hurry. And I? this, here. Oh, thank you. We haven't had a chance to say goodbye yet. Oh, there's lots of time to say goodbye. Say, who wrote that? Who wrote what? Whenever a snowflake leaves the sky, it turns and turns to say goodbye. I haven't the faintest idea. Where'd she go? Do you know the rest of it? The rest of what? The poem. Oh, no, I never did. Now, look, I... Well, it goes, uh, let's see. Whenever a snowflake leaves the sky, it turns and turns to say goodbye. That's fine. Goodbye. No, 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 Captain, don't go. No, I remember the rest. Yes, it, it goes, goodbye, dear cloud, so cool and gray, uh, um, um, something and something on its way. Look, do you mind if I get on my way? Oops, there we go. Goodbye, Captain. I uh, see what you did. Now I missed her. Goodbye. little things. Well, we sailed out of San Francisco in a downpour of rain. I remember seeing a Marine on deck walking around without his raincoat. I figured it was our job to keep our men healthy. Hey, you. You're going to catch cold, Leatherneck. Who, me? <laughs> and that a cold in my life. I found out later his name was Kansas. At least that's what they used to call him. He played football back there, made the All-Americans. One day he came out on the upper deck to get some sun. Hi, Lieutenant. What's crooked? Oh, hello, Leatherneck. How's your cold? Oh, it's, it's not a cold. It's just a little ruddy dose. <laughs> oh, well, you'd better not take too much of this tropical sun. You'll get burned. Who, be? I'd have a bird. Best tad you ever seen. Hey, what you doing? I'm writing a letter to a friend. Oh. <laughs> Irma, what's the date? It's Sunday. We had chapel. Sunday the what? Sunday the 7th. Sunday, December the 7th, Pearl Harbor. Most of us didn't even know what it was, let alone where it was. So instead of landing at Hawaii, we were ordered to join a convoy somewhere in the Pacific. None of us realized what the whole thing meant. All we knew was that we stuck to that convoy, and at night we ran without light. Hi, Lieutenant. Hi. Hey, wait a minute, will you? What do you want? Look, uh, what's the matter with me? Have I got uh, dandruff or something? Well, I really can't tell out here in the dark. That's not what I mean. I know what you mean. Uh, look, why don't you ever let me see you? 
Officers are not supposed to fraternize with enlisted men. I don't want to fraternize. I just want to see it. <laughs> oh, and pass the time of day. Well, it'd be better than nothing. Hmm? Take your arm away. Mm. Well, what's the matter? Sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> well, just stop your maneuvers before you make contact with the main body. Don't you like me? Mm-hmm. I like you. It's just sort of, so what, huh? That's right. Look, Lieutenant, if it's something I've done or if I just plain annoy you, I'm sorry. I won't bother you anymore. Oh, well, don't go. I'm, I'm just being childish. I sure would like to meet one guy, though, that doesn't make a pass. Well, when you do, you better begin to worry. <laughs> You're not so dumb. I just talk dumb. All right, come on, then, and get it over with. Put your arm around me. Oh, fine. Incidentally, I'm warning you, Kansas, I melt at a very low temperature. Well, now, try to be pals. Okay. And when you can't stand it any longer, from time to time, I'll let you kiss me. <laughs> Is uh, this one of those times? No. Okay. Let me know. Hey. Golly, what's that? I don't know. Subs, I guess. It was a sub, all right. They got two of the boats in our convoy. We picked up about a hundred survivors. One of them was a nurse from another ship, a girl named Olivia. She was a strange kind of girl. Her hands had been burned, and we tried to be friendly, but she wouldn't have any part of us, so we wouldn't have any part of her. One morning, Davy was in charge of the sick bay. It was Olivia's first day of duty. Oh, Olivia. Olivia, it's good to see you. How are your hands? They're fine. You know, you're a very lucky girl. Lucky? Well, yes. We didn't get many survivors. That's one way of looking at it. Tell me, why did your boat leave after Pearl Harbor? I realize we need supplies in the Philippines, but I, I don't, don't see... know, and I don't ask a lot of questions. Oh, I see. Well, your orders came through. You're to join our unit. Here are a couple of extra caps, and I've sent your new issue to room 10 on C deck. You'll bunk in with Miss Bocelli. She's already mentioned it to me. She doesn't want me to. Oh. All right, I'll find someone else. Doesn't matter to me. Oh, Joan. Joan, come over here. Yeah, Daisy? Joan, do you mind Olivia bunking in with you? Oh, what did I do to get punished? Oh, well, honestly, I'd do it myself, only Rosemary's still a little homesick and frightened. That Olivia, I'd like to give her an injection and leave the needle in. But okay if I'm the victim. Thanks, honey. I don't know why I'm so nice. <laughs> oh, Davy, there's a patient down there supposed to have a bath, and he won't let me give it to him. You want me to take over? Oh, I wish you would. The third bed from the door. Right. Good morning. Oh, don't be so cheerful. I know what you're here for, and I still say no female's going to bathe me. No? Well, let's see your chart. Lieutenant John Summers. That's right. With the medical unit. Mm-hmm. Oh, fine. A doctor, and you won't let a nurse wash you. I'm not a doctor. I'm a technician. I was associate professor of chemistry at Hawaii. Oh, a professor? Well, that explains it. Now, give me your arm, please. Now, what are you doing? You're going to have a bath, and don't be coy. Now, go away. I told you no female's going to give me a bath. Well, your mother did. Let go. Now, look. Do you give me your arm, or do I take away the whole blanket? Angels of mercy, huh? You're a bunch of wrestlers. <laughs> Here. Now, that's better. Oh, wait. Wait. What's the matter? Oh, it's my... my head. You feel dizzy? Yeah. No feeling in your hands and feet? Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what it is, don't you? What? You need a bath. Oh. Now, look. And stop faking. Okay, okay. Say, uh, tell me, when people get to know you awfully well, what do they call you? Lieutenant. Oh. That was John Summers. I'll tell you more about him later. Well, on Christmas Eve, we all decided to dress up a little and have a party. We'd been at sea for almost a month, and we needed some relaxation. I wanted to make an impression on Kansas, but the only snaky thing I had was a black nightgown, which, with a few trimmings, did for me. Rosemary Larson was in my room while I was getting dressed. Oh, here, John. Why did you wear this locket? Oh, well, that isn't mine. It must be Olivia's. Oh, I don't think she'd mind. Here, put it on. Oh, hello, Olivia. Take that locket off. I only want to wear it tonight. I, I said take it off. What do you mean, snooping around in my things? Say, who do you think you are? Oh, you want oh, to play you, rough, Davy? Davy! What is this? Stop it! Well, she started it, and I don't get slugged by anybody. Stop it, do you hear? 
say, what are you, a couple of children? Now, what is this? Sorry, Davy. Oh, it was my fault, Davy. By mistake, I opened Olivia's musette bag. She had no right to take my locket. She said it was a mistake, didn't she? Now, I don't care whose fault it was. You were both wrong. You realize that, don't you? I don't want to have to take any official action. Look, I know we're all nervous and jittery on a boat going nowhere, getting nowhere, but we, we've just got to hang on a little longer, that's all. Now, I don't want this to go outside this cabin. Come on, forget it and shake hands. Okay. Sorry, Olivia. I'd like to be left alone. All right, Joan, go ahead. Olivia, Joan's just impulsive. She she really didn't mean any harm. Come on. You hear they're starting the party. Now, why don't you come up with me, hmm? It may be our last party in a long time. Leave me alone, can't you? Leave me alone. All right, Olivia. John Summers was up and around now. He and Davy danced every dance that night. Having fun? Mm Mm-hmm. Say, did you get my present? Oh, yes, thank you. Well, what's mine in return? My thanks. I suppose I'll have to be satisfied with just that. You realize this is the first time you've been in my arms? Oh, I've been in lots of arms. Yes, but these are mine. I want you to get used to them. (laughs) What's the matter with you, Davy? Nothing. Why? You seem to be smiling all over tonight. Oh, go away. Merry Christmas. Good heavens. Aren't you in bed yet? Believe it or not, I was on the top deck with Kansas singing Christmas carols. Can I bunk in here, Davy? Now, did you have another row with Olivia? No, but she's scary. She just lies there and stares and never goes to sleep. Boo! It's like sleeping in a graveyard. Okay, you take my bed. I'll try it for tonight anyway. Thanks, pal. So tell me, has she ever opened up, ever given you a hint of what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. She's just naturally a frozen-faced ghoul. Well, good night, kid. Night, Davy. Are you asleep, Olivia? No. Do you mind if I turn on the light? No. Is it all right if I bunk in here? Yes. Oh, what's the matter, Olivia? Something's hurt you. Why don't you talk about it? Get it off your chest. You can forget I'm I'm your superior officer. It's none of your business, so don't forget that you are my superior officer. Well, maybe if I knew what was eating you, I could help. Nobody can, and I don't want anybody to try. I can do it myself. This is a locket, isn't it? Now, why did you lose your temper when John... Put that down. Do I go through your things? Oh, I don't think we'd better talk anymore. I'm beginning to get pretty sore. All right, so you're beginning to get pretty sore. Enjoy it, but stop prying into things that don't concern you. Maybe it does concern me. It concerns me that the morale of this group remains high, and until you joined up, it was. You're just a troublemaker. Look, I don't really care what's bothering you at all. I don't like you any more than the rest of the girls do. I'm supposed to be a nurse, and that's all. No. There's much more than that now that we're at war. Maybe you don't know what's up. Maybe you don't know what we're doing here. You think I don't know? All right, I'll tell you. I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm here, and I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill Japs, every blood-stained one I can get my hands on. Olivia. Doesn't sound nice coming from a nurse, does it? We're supposed to be angels of mercy. We're supposed to tend to the wounded and take care of the sick. We're supposed to be kind and tender and serve humanity in the name of humanity. What humanity? Jap humanity? Oh, Olivia, be quiet. No, you asked me. You wanted to know. You pried into things that didn't concern you. You wanted to know what this locket is. Well, look. It's a picture. It's a picture of a boy. Today's Christmas, isn't it? A time for cheer and good fellowship and for peace. Well, today's my wedding day. He and I were to be married today in St. Louis. And why weren't we? Because he's dead. He died that first morning. They killed him. I saw him. He was running across the field to his plane, and they killed him. Sixty bullets. By the time I got to him, he was dead. His face was gone. I couldn't see him anymore. Just blood. Blood all over. Olivia, don't, dear, don't. Let me go. They must be punished, and I'm going to punish them. Yes, dear. He was dead. It was ended for him. Oh, Olivia, darling. I wanted him. It was all I had. Yes, dear, I know. I loved him so much. (laughs) 
By then, we were pretty anxious to get off that boat, so we still didn't know where we were going. One night up on deck, Davy met John Summers. It was a quiet night. All over the boat, you could feel the throbbing of the engines. Hello. Oh, hello. Have you been trying to avoid me? Frankly, I have. Why? Well, because... Because I've been trying to avoid you. Oh. Now, look, I, I don't want to seem impetuous. You don't? All right, I do want to seem impetuous, then. But the point is, anything can happen. Such as? Well, a boat might sink. Yes, it might. If it does, we might never see each other again. That's possible. Unless it's some place in the hereafter. <laughs> well, I'll see you there sometime. Good night. Well, no, wait a minute. I haven't made my point yet. After all, I'm not such a bad guy. I'm supposed to be very intelligent, in fact. I work hard. I make 5000 a year. Uh oh you make $160 a month now. Oh, please. I mean this. I'm in love with you, Lieutenant. John. If only we'd met somewhere else before, you'd have had a wonderful time as I wooed you. You think so? Oh, I'm positive. I'd have been really foolish. I would have spent sleepless nights and bought flowers to lay at your feet. I'd have been very careful with you in taxi cabs, knowing, of course, that you're not that kind of a girl. <laughs> at first, I think my dog-like devotion would have made you pity me a little. And then my fatal charm would have snuck up on you, and before you knew it, you'd be mine. In some dingy little French restaurant where the wine wasn't too bad. But with all that's happening, I don't have to be ridiculous for you to love me. There's no time. Out there this second, a torpedo might be spinning toward us. And you've no time either. We haven't got a second to waste. You're right. There's no time. No time for anything personal. But thanks for everything you said. And maybe everything you say is true, and maybe you wouldn't have had to do all those things. I'd have stopped you the moment I knew. You know now, don't you? Oh, no, please, John, don't make it difficult. I, I've been trying to avoid you. That ought to tell you something. I can't love you. I won't permit myself to. Well, why not? Because I've got a job to do. Well, what's that got to do with it? We've all got jobs to do. I know, but our responsibilities are greater now. Nothing can stand in the way. Oh, I, I wish we had met somewhere in a dingy little French restaurant, but maybe we will later. Good night. Let me kiss you goodbye, then. No. Just once. All right. Oh, Janet. John... Oh, John, listen. What's the matter? Well, the engines have stopped. Your life preserver. Where's your life preserver? I left it down in the cabin. Here, take mine. No, I... Take it. Darling, before anything happens, do you love me? No. You're lying. You do love me. Yes. Well, say it then. I love you. you better get down to your station, Summers. What do the engines stop for, sir? Run up to the captain. I'm sure he'll be delighted to tell you over a scotch and soda. Well, there's a plane up there. I can hear it. Is it one of ours, I wonder? Sounds like it. Listen. Yes, it is one of ours. It's a PBY. Well, then we can't be far away from land. Land. That'll be a relief. I wonder where we'll make port. I heard this afternoon. I don't know what the place is exactly, but I heard the name. Any port in a storm. Where is it? Oh, it was some place called... Oh, what was it? Oh, yes. The Tan. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake, Sonny Tufts, and Les Tremaine, will return in So Proudly We Hail. These are days when thousands of American women serving on the home front are cheerfully working harder and longer than they ever thought they could. Many as factory workers. Sorry, Mary, I just can't make it someday. We're working all day, a rush shipment to get out. Many housewives devoting their evenings. Phew, I'm tired. But I promised I'd be at the home nursing course tonight, and I wouldn't renege for anything. Not much time in their crowded days for elaborate beauty care. But, busy as they are... These women consider it mighty important to keep on looking their prettiest. One reason being... Goodness, I wouldn't dream of neglecting my looks just because Bill's away. He wouldn't like that. So these women with little time to spare are more than ever glad of Lux Toilet Soap, the gentle complexion soap that makes their daily beauty care so easy and so pleasant. They find active lather wonderfully rich and creamy. It whisks away stale cosmetics thoroughly, every trace of dust and dirt. Their daily active lather facial is the same that famous screen stars take, like this. Smooth the creamy Lux soap lather well in, lots and lots of it. You can just feel your skin taking on new freshness. Then, rinse with warm water, splash with cold, and pat dry with a towel. Use this care every day and see if it doesn't make your complexion lovelier. Yes, pretty women all over the country say that daily facials with Hollywood beauty soap really work. 
Day by day, this care can help skin to be softer and smoother. Try it and see. If you should find your dealer is temporarily out of Lux Toilet Soap due to wartime conditions, ask for it again next time you shop. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is worth waiting for. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of So Proudly We Hail, starring Claudette Colbert as Davy, Paulette Goddard as Joan, and Veronica Lake as Olivia, with Sonny Tufts as Kansas, and Les Tremaine as John. We landed the next day at Maravellis on Batan Peninsula. It was about 40 miles from the front line. That's where Kansas was heading for when I met him out on the road. I am. Hello, Kansas. Gosh, you've been looking all over for it. Just wanted to say so long. Oh, well, I'll be seeing you. Kansas, are you scared, too? Uh, you mean as if you suddenly feel as if you lost your belly? Yeah. Well, me too, and I guess we get over I hope so. Well, so long, Kansas, and don't get lost. For me? <laughs> I never get lost. So long. Hey, wait. Huh? Your gang went in the other direction. Oh, thanks. Don't let anything happen to you, Kansas. Who, me? That never happens to me. Hey! Mm. Mm. Fellow of a duffel bag. Yes. Come well, on, goodbye, Kansas. So long. <coughs> we arrived at Lamai that night, a dusty little village just behind the front lines. We were hoping to get a couple of hours sleep, but Mama McGregor fixed that. She was our commanding officer. So you finally got here, eh? Well, my name is McGregor, and my bite is worse than my bark. Now you better all dive into your whites, and I'll get you some GI tomorrow. Can't wear whites here. The nearest laundry's in Manila. We need you right away. Some of our girls have forgotten what the word sleep means. Gee, show them to nurse's quarters. Now get a move on. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Captain. We'll get right here. Captain McGregor. Yes? I'm Olivia Darcy. Do you have any Japanese wounded here? A few? Why? I'd like to handle them. Oh, do you know the language? No, but I'm anxious to learn. Well, I guess you can be accommodated. I'll put you down for Ward 11. Thank you, Captain. Here's your list, Lieutenant Davidson. You've been assigned to surgery. Thanks. O'Doul's in the children's ward, and Emerson's in surgery with you. Darcy's in with the Japanese wounded. Darcy I... with the Japanese wounded? Oh, no. But she requested oh, it. Oh, but you mustn't do this. We've got to get her out. Olivia. Olivia, where are you? Olivia, look at me. It's all right. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the guts, I suppose. I couldn't kill even a wounded rat. Well, somebody oh. tell me what this is all about. Oh, there, there's no reason to worry, Captain McGregor. I, I was just a little silly. Well, don't you think it'd be better if I took over here? No, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong here, is there, Olivia? No. You see, Captain, she'll be all right. I know she will. Day after day, the wounded kept pouring in. After a while, there weren't any beds. There was no morphine, and still they kept coming. John Summers had been up in the front line. And then one evening he drove in with a truckload of wounded. When Davy went off duty for an hour, she met him down by the river. This is the place. The Batan River. Every time I get off, I come here and pretend that you're with me. You wouldn't even know there's a war going on here. That was the idea. Darling, was it terrible up there? Well, it wasn't pretty. We're outnumbered. Sometimes the Jap losses are 300 to 1, and still they keep coming. And those Filipino scouts and our poor guys sleeping on their rifles and machine guns. They're the bravest men I've ever even heard of. They must be. They don't give quarter and they don't ask for any. I, I can't figure it out, Janet. Figure what? Why they do it. There's something other than just fighting against the Japs. These fellows aren't a bit afraid to die. Oh, that, that's our air raid signal. Come on, there's a trench over there. You know, 
This is the only nice thing the Japs have done so far in this war. What? Giving us a place to hide out. An air raid, a foxhole, and you. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Oh, look at that sign. But this foxhole approved by good housekeeping. You see, we have nothing but the best. <laughs> you know, sometimes I thought you might forget me. I tried to. You did? What for? Because you troubled me so much. I'm sorry. Everything that happens, everything I do, you're part of. I can't get you out of my mind. Don't try. No, I'm not going to anymore. What are you looking at me like that for? I want to remember exactly how you look. You know, sometimes I... I couldn't even remember the color of your eyes. Your whole face was hazy. <laughs> That's when I look my best. Uh, I'm glad I had you to think about up there. John, I... I hate to think of you going back. Well, then don't. I have a feeling that if you do go back, I'll never see you again. Now, don't worry. I'll take care of myself. Promise you won't worry. I promise. But I'll worry. That's the all clear. Well, I guess the honeymoon's over. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, John. The pressure on the front line was too strong. And we finally got orders to evacuate. All over the town, the demolition squad was blowing up buildings. We were the last to get out. At least we thought we were getting out. But when we started to pile into the car... <laughs> get down! Get out of the car! Everybody get back in the surgery! Hurry! It was a Jap patrol that had infiltrated through. We had two machine gunners with us, but they were both killed. We were alone in the village. Six girls. Get down on the floor. Close that door and put the lights out. Now quiet, do you hear? Davy, we're alone. There's no one left here but us. We'll get out somehow. Do you think they'll miss us? Do you think they'll send someone back for us? Of course they will. And what are we going to do? I know what I'm going to do. If somebody doesn't come, we'd, we'd better all kill ourselves. But why? Somebody's coming. Davy said someone's coming. I was in Nanking. I saw what happened to the women there. When the Red Cross protested, the Japanese called it the privilege of serving His Imperial Majesty's troops. It's an honor. An honor you'd die from. Stop that nonsense, do you hear? Look, look, here's a grenade. Maybe we can get them here. If we... Give me that. If we threw a grenade and missed it, it would mean death for all of us. We might kill one. Stop talking about killing. Now listen to me. I want you all to stay here. I'm going out and start that truck. As soon as you hear the motor running, make a dash for it. It's our only chance. Don't go, Davy. Don't go. Be quiet. Davy. Wait. Come here a minute. What is it, Levy? Listen, if, if one of us went, I mean, if one of us gave herself up. Don't be crazy. Listen. listen, I've got a grenade. If I walk toward them with my hands up, it's only a patrol. I could wipe them out. Give me that grenade. Goodbye, Davy. Give it to me, do you? It's one or all of us. No. Thanks for everything, Davy. Davy, Davy, come back. Davy, Davy, where's she going? What's she going to do? Get away from the window. She's walking up the road. She's got her hands up. There's the Jap patrol. They're coming toward her. Five of them. I can't see her. They've surrounded her. Oh, Libby! Libby! Our new base was right in the middle of the jungle. We had more than wounded now. The men were coming down with malaria and dysentery. Some of us got malaria, too. Fevers of 104. There wasn't any coddling. The soldiers were the patients. Hi, Lieutenant. Kansas. Why, you big tramp. You know, you always say what I expect. Well, isn't that nice? Say, what are you doing here, anyway? I got some letters for you. Oh, thanks, pal. Hey, they're open. Yeah, I guess them senses must have run out of glue. Kansas, have you been reading my mail? Well, I had to read myself to sleep, didn't I? You don't want to deprive me of my sleep, do you? Anyway, I didn't read them all. Very dull, most of them. Very dull. Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry. Except this, uh, Dr. O'Leary. He's rather a cute guy, ain't he? Is he? He writes with that real literary style. What's he to you? Well, since you read them, dear, you ought to know. Yeah, I don't like him. Oh, well, that's too bad. Hey, I got some news. There's a big convoy on the way. What? Yeah, supplies and reinforcements. That'll be here tomorrow. Hey, kids! There's a convoy coming! (laughs) 
Yes, Colonel White? Oh, come in, Davidson. We're sending McGregor to Corregidor. So I want you and your staff to report to Baggio in the morning. Take over in her place. Yes, sir. Do you know if there are any nurses coming on the convoy? What convoy? What convoy? For the one we've been celebrating all day. There isn't any convoy. It's been sunk. Oh, no. They're trying to get others through to us. But only a few small vessels have succeeded. Not enough to mean much. Is it as bad as all that? Yes. General MacArthur left tonight. Left Batan? He was ordered off. He's gone to Australia. But why? Because he's needed more there than he is here, I guess. He didn't want to go. Well, maybe I'd better tell the others. No, uh, don't do anything about it. Good evening of relaxation might help. What they don't know won't hurt them. No, I suppose not. Especially when what they do know does. Yes. Good night, Janet. Good night, sir. In a week or so, we got the worst of the news. The whole front line had collapsed. We were under fire for days. Rosemary Larson. Rosemary was killed when they bombed the hospital. Davy's hands were burned down to the bone trying to get her out. And still the wounded came. And this time, one of them was John Summers. Davy, John Summers just came in. He's been wounded. What is it? It's a leg wound. They're taking him to surgery now to remove the fragment. There isn't time. We've been ordered off. We're going to Corregidor. When? Right now. Get him into a truck. I have to report to the colonel, but I'll be right back. I've got everyone, sir. We're ready to leave. Good. Goodbye, Janet. Aren't you coming? No, I'm not. But your orders. New orders have just come through. Have we surrendered? We'll surrender at nine in the morning. Oh, no. Go on now, quick. Yes, sir. Uh, Janet, wait. You've got to do one thing for me. See to it that the girls get through to the rock. Yes, sir. We'll get through. So long. Good luck, sir. We made Maravellis that night. All we had were a lot of small boats to take us over to Corregidor. But Davy wouldn't come yet. The doctor was going to operate on John. She found him in a tunnel near the dock. Doctor, Doctor, is John Summers here? Yes. Can you assist me, nurse? No, my hands, they've been burned. Oh, oh all right. I, I think I can do it alone. Come over here. Janet. Oh, John, darling. Hey, where are the others? You better go with them. No, there's plenty of time. All right, I'm ready. Well, you'll have to go in for that bomb fragment, Summers. May become infected. Well, that's not likely. It's probably a piece of good American steel. Here we go. Sorry, we have no anesthetic. Well, that's okay. Give me your hand, Janet. Is it out of order if we hold hands, Doctor? Well, uh, her hands are... No, no, it's all right, Doctor. Huh? Oh, very well. Well, let's get it over. No. Oh, it's all right, darling. Hold my hands. Now hold tight. Tighter. I think I've located it. I'll have another try. Now, this may hurt even more. <laughs> Sounds like a dentist. Janet. Hold tighter, darling. Hold tighter. Hang on, Lieutenant. Try to think of something else. Here I am. Ham and eggs. Hotcakes. White bread. Coffee. Here it comes now. Hold on. John. It's all right, Doctor. You can go right ahead now. He's fainted. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake, Sonny Tufts, and Les Tremaine in the third act of So Proudly We Hail. Evening, Mr. Kennedy. Who do you think I just met? A lovely screen star, I'd guess, Libby. And you'd be right. It was Mrs. Thomas Wallace. Mrs. Wallace? Carol Landis to you, Mr. Kennedy, remember? Oh. She was married recently in London to an American Army pilot. I talked to her at 20th Century Fox Studio where she's making four Jills and a Jeep. Oh, of course. Say, Libby, wasn't Carol the girl who, who got right up close to the sound of guns when she was making that tour of army camps in North Africa? Uncomfortably close, Mr. Kennedy. She actually had to crawl into a foxhole for shelter one night during a bombing raid. And do you know what she told me her first thought was as the bombs began to fall? Tell us, Libby. Well, only a woman would have thought of it, Mr. Kennedy. There goes my last pair of nylons, she said to herself. But seriously... Carol said she was impressed over and over again with the importance of looking lovely on that tour of the camps. 
It meant so much to the boys to see a pretty, well-groomed woman. She's come back convinced that no girl, girl should think of letting down on beauty care these days. Well, Libby, certainly Carol's complexion care is a quick, easy one that works. Carol's a luxe girl, you know. She certainly is, Mr. Kennedy. She says a woman is foolish not to give her skin gentle, protecting care. I always use Lux Toilet Soap. It's a real beauty soap. Carol depends on her daily act of lather facials. As many other busy and famous stars do, Libby, there's something about the creamy lather of Lux Toilet Soap that makes it the choice of lovely women everywhere. And here's a thrift tip about Hollywood's beauty soap. Lux Toilet Soap is hard-milled, you can use each satin-smooth cake down to the thinnest sliver. That means a lot right now when it's patriotic not to waste soap. Moisten that last little sliver and press it against a new cake. And remember, Lux Toilet Soap will last even longer if you always put it in a soap dish that's dry. Why not get some of the fine white soap 9 out of 10 screen stars use tomorrow? Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Our stars had quite a hectic experience at Paramount while working and so proudly we hail. We'll ask them to tell you about it after the play. Now here's the third act, starring Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, and Veronica Lake, with Sonny Tufts and Les Tremaine. <laughs> On the deck of a hospital ship, homeward bound from Australia, Nurse Joan O'Doul continues the story of the escape from Bataan. The ship's doctor listens attentively. Joan has paused for a moment... Remembering the horrors of Bataan. Well, did Lieutenant Davidson get John Summers off Bataan? Oh, yes, she did, Major. We rode across in the darkness to Corregidor. Corregidor spelled safety for us. They called it the Gibraltar of the Pacific, and we lived most of the time deep in the tunnels under the rock. But the Japs plastered us day and night. The noise almost split our eardrums. Once in a while, we got out of the tunnel for a breath of air. What, no dive bombers today? Oh, well, it's not time. They're still out to lunch. Well, there's no quinine left. No quinine? What are we going to do? Oh, nurse, what do you think we're going to do? Well, they can't take us off. Oh, why are we here anyway? Why, why, why? Why isn't there any quinine? Why isn't there any food? Why aren't there any supplies? Why are we waiting here like rats, waiting for the man to come and pour scalding water over us? Why was nothing done? Why? Oh, take it easy, Davy. I'll tell you why. It's our own fault. Our fault? What did we do? Because we believed we were the world. That the United States of America was the whole world. Those outlandish places. Batan, Corregidor, Mindanao. Those aren't American names. Oh, no. No, they're just American graveyards. Well, why don't they get us off? They can't get us off. We've become what they call a delaying action. That's what those 50,000 men on Batan were. They were merely saving time. I only hope to God the people back home aren't losing it for us. Well, here they come again. Hey, Ray, take yeah. shot. They're always on time anyway. Back in the tunnel. Do the best you can, Davy. Quinine or no quinine, we've got to keep their fevers down. We're doing everything we know, Ma. I'm sure you are. Oh, Janet, can I speak to you for a minute? Yes. What are you doing here? We discharged you a week ago. Well, I thought you knew I was your permanent patient. What is it, darling? I just wanted to say goodbye for a few days. What are you talking about? Well, we sort of made up a little party, and we're going down around Mindanao to see if we can find some quinine. Oh, but you can't go. Why not? Well, your leg, you're still too weak. I'm no weaker than the rest. John, you're not well yet. We'll all be a lot worse if we don't get some supplies. When do you have to go? We leave at five in the morning. That's nine long hours from now. Nine hours. Wait a minute. Oh, Ma. Yes? Ma, I want you to know I'm going to break a regulation. Mm, is that something new with you? <laughs> no, but I'm really going to smash one this time. I'm going to get married. The chaplain married them an hour later. Mama Gregor gave him a bottle of wine for a wedding present and some bread and peanut butter. After the ceremony, they climbed up to a gun emplacement overlooking the bay. I'm not going to eat any more of this. I'm going to save some. No, no, not me. This isn't the kind of wedding cake you put under your pillow and sleep on. John, look up there. The stars look like street lights, don't they? Sure. Haven't you ever been to the Rainbow Room before? That's the street below us. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I guess marrying you has changed my perspective completely. Oh, it's probably the wine. 
I thought you were going to take me to a dingy little French restaurant. This is pretty classy. Holy cats, you remember everything I say. I take you very seriously. Hey, did I ever tell you about my place in the country? No. No, I, I don't know anything about you, really. I don't even know if you have a middle name. I have. Mattathias. Oh, why? An uncle. He left me this little farm I was telling you about. It's quite worth it. Is it? Yes. And you'd love it. A time will come when you and I will go out on a summer evening when the grass is fresh and the clouds white as if they'd just been washed. The earth's warm and still. Time passes quietly. Everything's simple. Just you and me and the kid. Sons? Oh, daughters. They're more decorative. <laughs> Let's get out of here and go home. Home. I remember a poet somewhere. He, he said, home is the place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Darling, do you want to know something? What? I'm not afraid anymore. Darling, it's time to get up. Hmm? Oh. It's time to get up and go to work. You've only got five minutes. Oh, it's a fine time to go to sleep on our honeymoon. It was a wonderful honeymoon. Here, finish up that wine. Oh, no, no, you... Oh, go ahead. My grandmother used to say it'll warm your stomach up. All right. To you, honey. So long, darling. So long, John. And wait for me. I'll be back. I know. I'll be right here. Kansas was on Corregidor, too. He came into the hospital one morning while I was trying to fix a radio. Hiya. What you doing? Oh, this radio's on the blink again. Say, what would you like better than anything else in the world? A tomato. I'd give my left knee for a tomato. Oh. A tomato and some flying fortresses. Wouldn't that make a lovely salad? Yeah. Why'd you ask me, Kansas? Well, I got something for you. See? Chocolate. Oh, gee, Kansas. That's swell of you. Hmm. Where'd you get it? Well, a raiding party of Japs tried to land last night, and I got me a couple of them. And on one of them, I found the... Sh Kansas, how could you do a thing like that to me? I can't figure you dames out. Chocolate is chocolate. You're positively disgusting, and don't fiddle with that radio. You'll get a shock. Who, me? <laughs> I never get shocked. <clears throat> Look, don't ever say don't to me again. Right after that, our final orders came through. Colonel Clark gave them to us early one evening. At ease, girls. Oh. This is a very serious occasion. It's not known how much longer Corregidor can hold out. I have here orders from headquarters. You nurses will meet in front of the main hospital tunnel at 9 o'clock tonight. Be evacuated to Australia. There were about 20 of us ordered off. The rest were to follow as soon as possible. Davy was one of the first 20, and so was I. When I'd packed my things, I went looking for Kansas. Hey, over here. Kansas, we've been ordered off. I know, it's all over the rock already. Well, I, I came to say goodbye. Well, I'm glad you did. Look, if you don't wait for me back there, I'll break your neck. Oh, be sure you don't break yours, Kansas. Don't worry, and stop that sniffing. Here, give me a handkerchief. Here. Hey, look at the size of that. When you get back, you should get some real ones. I used to get mine to five and dime, big red ones. Remember? Mm -hmm. Bandanas. Gee, what a place those five and dimes are, huh? Everything in them. Yeah. You might send me a dozen of them when you get back. Where, Kansas? Here. What do you think? I'll be here till Tokyo freezes over. And I suppose if we were to surrender that you'd be dumb enough not to. Yeah, I'd be dumb that way. Oh, Kansas. Kiss me a big lug. Now you're talking. <laughs> hey, we should have been doing more of this in the campaign. You and your wanting to be pals. Well, I thought you were just another guy on the make. I was. Gee, I'm glad I met up with you, Kansas. The pleasure's been all mine. You big blimp. Well, 
So long, kid. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Kansas. And be careful. Don't get killed. Who, me? <laughs> I'll never get killed. Kansas. <laughs> There was a boat waiting for us at the dock at midnight. McGregor lined us up. She wasn't leaving with us, but she wanted to say goodbye. Well, I guess that's everybody. Good luck to you children, all of you. Goodbye, Davy. I'm not going. You're not what? I'm not going. I never intended to. You heard the orders. Now, I don't want any funny business you get in that boat. No. Do you realize every moment of stalling here means that those planes in the harbor are in danger? That's not our artillery. I can't go. I promised I'd be here when he got back. He asked me to. Oh, now, please, Ma. I order you to go. I won't tell Take orders. I'm not in the army anymore. When I married, I broke regulations. It meant I was out. You can't make me go. Stop talking like an hysterical schoolgirl. I'm going to be right here when he gets back. He won't be back. How do you know? Tell me, how do you know? There's been no word at all. They've considered them officially lost for a week. You're lying. You know you're lying. You're just saying Would that. I lie about that, Davy? Now, would I? No, you wouldn't, but I know he's still alive. He's out there somewhere, and I can't go. I can't. Janet, if he's alive, he'll find No, me. let me go. I'm not going. Down, everybody, down. Davy, Davy. Marva, she hit. No, she's just done. Get her in the boat. Hurry. Well, I I guess that's all, Major. You see, Davy wasn't like the rest of us. She never gave way. But now everything snapped at once. And when we got her on board the plane, she never spoke again. Maybe we should have left her on Corregidor. What's happened would have happened one way or another. Thank you, Lieutenant. Now, I think maybe I can try to make her speak, or hear at least. Come over this way. Miss Davidson... We're almost home. Do you hear me? We're almost home. I have a letter for you, Miss Davidson. I'm going to read it to you. It says, My darling, I'm writing this for Mindanao. We leave in the morning for an unknown destination. I write this with no so-called premonitions. As a matter of fact, I'm writing this in a pleasant little bar on the outskirts. I've ordered two daiquiris, one for you and one for me. I miss you. I miss you all the time. It was such a short time, wasn't it? And yet I remember every second of it. I think about you all the time and wish things were different. Things will be different. I know that now because there is good in this war, much as I hate it. This is not just a war of soldiers. You weren't soldiers in the strict sense. You were just kids from all walks of life. All kinds of people. There's something new in this war. Something good. You could see it, this new thing even in their tired, hungry phases as they took courage one from another. This is now a people's war, because civilians also get killed. It's the people's war because they have taken it over now and are going to win it and end it with a purpose, to live like men with dignity, in freedom. This is our war now, and this time it will be our peace. I'm proud, proud to have known you, darling, proud to have received your love. Already I've had a complete, rich life in three short months. John. Do you hear, Miss Davidson? She's opening her eyes. Oh, Davy. Davy. The letter. Give me my letter, please. My darling, I'm enclosing a deed to that little farm I told you about. It's now in your name. I'll wait for you there. Or if you're there first, wait for me. Thank you, my darling, for my life. Thank you for everything. You're devoted. And this is the first time I've ever written it. Your devoted husband, John. Darling. I'll wait, darling. I'll wait. Handsome is as handsome does. 
We've had some handsome acting tonight from Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake, and Sonny Tufts. Thank you, C.B. The real tribute to the nurses of the United States Army will be found in the hearts of the American fighting men. It was a privilege to play the part of one of those women. I know that while the picture was in production, three of the most beautiful women in Hollywood caused quite a stir in the Paramount Hall. Oh, you mean overalls, dirty faces, and steel hats, Sonny? Yeah, in one case, no peekaboo bang. bang. <laughs> <laughs> At long last, the world has seen Veronica Lake's other eye. How do you like the change, Veronica? I see better. After <laughs> shooting a picture where your makeup consists mostly of mud, you must have spent quite a bit of time each day getting the mud off. In fact, I, I, I don't see how you all came out of it looking so lovely. Are you serious? Well, no, of course not. Do we have to tell you about soap? <laughs> now, don't torture him. <laughs> There's a very fine soap called Lux CB. We use it. Ah. In fact, it was unanimous, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> he may not have heard that Lux soap is an excellent complexion care. <laughs> well, I have triple proof of the prowess of Lux soap right in front of me. By the way, Paulette... I hear you've turned into a farmer. Well, 70 acres worth, Mr. DeMille. It's in New York State. What do you grow, Paulette? <laughs> Chickens. And it works out very well. Last spring, I traded some eggs for seed corn, and now I'm using the corn to feed the chickens, and I'm trading the eggs for the farm allotment of gasoline. <laughs> uh, not, the, not the same eggs, I hope. Uh, I'll never make a horse trade with you after that experience. How about trading us a little news on next week's show? Uh, it's good news, too, Sonny. Because our play is the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer screen hit, Salute to the Marines. And our stars are the same ones you saw in the picture, Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter. Salute to the Marines is the story of an old-time sergeant major who retired just before the war and settled down in peace and quiet with his family, right on the battlefront. A real thriller with plenty of comedy and two real troopers. Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter. I know your audience will love it, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> certainly four-star acting. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in Salute to the Marines. Mr. Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, American war production is being slowed down by labor turnover. Workers leaving their jobs for a variety of causes. Many of these causes, such as bad housing conditions and inadequate transportation, are being eliminated by cooperative action. Meanwhile, every worker in a war job has a personal responsibility to stick on the job. Men on the fighting fronts are making great sacrifices. Men and women on the production front owe it to our heroes to stay on their war jobs. Claudette Colbert will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, No Time for Love. Paulette Goddard's next Paramount picture is Standing Room Only, and Veronica Lake will next be seen on the screen in the Paramount production, The Hour Before Dawn. The picture, so proudly we hail, was produced and directed by Mark Sandridge. Heard in tonight's play were Regina Wallace, Catherine Craig, Trudy Marson, Dorothy Scott, Marjorie Davies, Leo Cleary, Boyd Davis, Charles Seal, 